What is up down and sideways, you absolutely beautiful individuals? We are back with another FPL League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you for a little bit of QF. That's quarter final preview action from the World Championship for tasty, exciting uh, matchups. You're always guaranteed one lopsided and one that's happening way too early on in the tournament. Those are exactly the matchups we're getting, and we're going to start with what's the easiest one to predict, and that is, of course, the quick, easy 3-0 that FlyQuest is going to put on Gen G. Yeah, no question about it. The LCS versus the LCK. It's a top no... seed versus a second seed. Yeah, exactly. FlyQuest got to be favored in this one. Uh, No. No siree. <laughs> no questions about it. I think a lot of people are writing in the 3-0 for the LCK's Gen G to roll on through FlyQuest. I think there is a lot of people overlooking FlyQuest way too much. There's absolutely nothing wrong and nothing out of question with favoring Gen G in this matchup. But I think the way that FlyQuest is being disrespected and completely ruled out whatsoever is something a lot of people need to re-examine. And listen, I loved Busio in an interview talking about it. He said, listen, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hanwha Life. We almost beat them, took a game off of them. We believe we can beat Gen G, and that's absolutely the mentality you should be having, and I think you can have confidence having if you're FlyQuest, partially because of that Humble Life series, and you're coming off a decisive Game 3 against Team Liquid. You should have that mentality, otherwise you've already lost the series from the get-go. The problem is, so many of the maybe advantages or things you like about FlyQuest in most most matchups, even that Hama Life one, we're saying, oh, Bwipo could cook something up. He can, he can have a better performance on the day than Doran. But when things come over to Genji, you're going, well, that's not happening against Keen. Okay, a Nunu pick is fun. Some spicy stuff in the jungle is great. But now you're going against Canyon. He's the OG guy who's been doing that to teams for years. You're you're not finding one of those, oh, I'm a recall right in front of Nunu type moments, I think, against a Gen G roster, against someone like Canyon in the jungle and the preparation. It absolutely is something where you shouldn't discredit a squad like FlyQuest and what they were able to do against Hanwha Life and, and the strategies and, and interactions and everything else that you saw in that game. It also is something to realize Gen G is not Hanwha Life. They are different, even if they are of that same elite type of caliber. Where that power is, where it's allocated and how it comes through is absolutely different. And that is the thing that I'm worried about with this uh, matchup for FlyQuest that is different than Hanwha Life. You laid out already Keen in the top side and how stable, what type of options you can roll into him is going to be different. And then add on top of that Canyon patrolling around that area and what he's going to be able to do. That's something different. Chovy in the mid lane. Yes, Zekka performing extremely well on Yone. A little bit different in how he goes for some of these engages and what he wants to do with the team than Chovy. But you're also looking at other champions coming through with Chovy and how he's able to deal that damage, get that CS in lane, and really put you in the hole. And then you go down to that bottom lane. And that is actually where I'm even more concerned about this one for FlyQuest. Not necessarily that Masu in the Pays type of matchup. I'm worried about Busio into Lahens and what type of crazy maniacal chaos he's got cooked up for the LCS bot lane. Yeah, and ever since we've seen the massive glow up from the Stingy bot lane, it's kind of been Pays following up on the insanity that is Lahens. So the straight up 2v2, you're sweating a little bit as well. And listen, Masu's been the best performer on FlyQuest so far, but now you're hitting the wall that is Pays. Uh, who has been styling on people on Twitch, other kinds of maybe off-meta picks that we've seen this guy been able to pull out, and then, of course, similar champion pool to Masu, like so many other AD carries have at this event. So pretty much every matchup you're sweating a little bit to a lot for FlyQuest. The one angle of hope that you can maybe write is it will have been 15 days since Gen G last played a matchup by the time they get going on this quarterfinal because they're the last day of quarterfinals. Obviously, Gen G qualified early. So maybe there'll be some on-stage rust because FlyQuest has played multiple best of threes between them, has been there much more recently. So maybe they're just a little bit more comfortable, but they'll be playing on a brand new stage. So maybe that doesn't even work. 
<laughs> we'll see about that one. I, I think that a lot of people are maybe, you know, building it up a little bit too much, talking about the, the gaps between the games that we have and obviously the formatting between going, you know, road show, go to the quarterfinals, you know, pack everything up, go to the semifinals, pack everything up, go to the finals type of situation and the time needed between that. A squad like Gen G, yes, this absolutely is fair to acknowledge that they are on a major break since they clinched this spot, since they were on the bench waiting for everybody else to sort themselves out type of situation. It's important to remember that type of break and that type of time and acknowledge that it's similar to a lot of the times that, okay, a team is going to MSI or a team is going to this type of event or we've got this break between now and when we're going to see them in playoffs. And every single time we do that, we wonder whether they're the exact same. Have they kept that sharp edge that they were on before that break? And I feel like those questions will be fair to Gen G and as well the questions on do you have that right read, that special exact read of the meta to roll with what you want in these games and really push that and put FlyQuest in a hole. That's going to be a challenge that I want to see from Gen G's. Do they have that draft advantage or is it going to be FlyQuest because they've been playing these games, they've been involved, they've seen everything through these days where they're backstage, they're watching all the games, all these things. Not under any uh, delusion that Gen G has not been watching these games, keeping track of all these type of things. It is a little bit different when you're off and when you're on on the day. Yeah, and, you know, that's really the only other avenue is we have seen Gen G in years past maybe not adapt to the meta fast enough. That's pretty much the only angle. I think FlyQuest puts up more in a fight than people are expecting coming into this series. I can absolutely see them being in competitive, having angles to win in every single game. And losing 3-0. <laughs> I was going to say that, I mean, I'm, I'm wanting to predict and cook up and, you know, uh, bang the NA chest and say, you know, it's going to be a four-game series at least, which is, that's banging our chest to say, and we're getting a four-game series out of this one. Uh, but I certainly can see all the avenues where FlyQuest is competitive in one or two of these games and then has an absolute letdown in, in the third one or something like that type of situation against Gen G. Yes, Gen G should be favored. I think people are overlooking FlyQuest too much for what they have shown us so far at this event. But let's roll through with Gen G. A little closer matchup on paper and a budding rivalry now. LCK versus LPL. We're talking T1 versus Top Esports. Obviously, TES handing T1 their lone loss of the tournament so far earlier in the Swiss stage. These guys played in the EWC finals. So we've got a lot of this matchup to look at from this year. Yes, we've been able to see how things play out. What we've been getting from this high-octane, high-powered matchup between the LCK and the LPL. Very happy that we get it here at this little uh, spot because it absolutely is one of these ones for a quarterfinals that brings an extra level of heat, an extra level of spice and expectations for both of these teams. But you know that getting one of these now is just setting us up for some juicy semifinals ahead of us. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at the matchups for this, I think... The most important one is probably mid lane. I know time and time again, we're always talking about Faker as a key matchup, but it's more, can he step up or is this uh, even bigger? I know we've said it's a coming out party for Cream since like MSI in terms of internationally showing up, but if he's able to get an advantage or multiple advantages over Faker in this matchup, then that might be enough to shift the entire series. Problem is... I feel like the mid lane meta is shifting back into champions fakers a little more comfortable on. Yeah, and a, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more able to facilitate for the rest of the T1 lineup is a big part of that champion pool, of that comfort for him and what he is able to push forward for this T1 team. I like that uh, identifying the mid lane matchup because Cream certainly has been a lot better than a lot of people's expectations meta and the champion pool has played a, a part of that as well i think and how he's been able to really flex his muscles on some of these melee champions in the mid lane that he likes to do tian has been a big part of that don't forget about that and how he's been able to to work with him in the jungle has been a big part of why anything is going uh, right into that type of way but yes faker getting on some of these champions that he is comfortable with able to facilitate for the rest of the team 
is going to be a factor that you want to be seeing. Now, the question is going to be, are you spending draft capital, right? The pick and ban capital on a securing some of those ones and leaving other areas a little bit more open, a little bit more vulnerable, a little bit more uh, less prime in the meta situation to secure that one for fake. And the other matchup that's the most exciting in this one is, of course, the top lane. We just saw... 369 rolling them nines on a couple of Cassante games in their last series, but we've yet to see him really bust out some high impact carries. He's gotten fed on Rumble, but then missed some equalizers. So very curious to see if a matchup against Zeus is going to have to force out some of these more split push or team fight oriented picks out of 369. And we've seen 369 versus Zeus a handful of times. And let's just say every single time does not disappoint. This is a very high-powered matchup, uh, let alone from the teams with these two top laners and what they like to play. Of course, relatively, you know, different champion pools. There's, of course, some overlap, some sharing within within the meta and what they've been able to play, but absolutely expect a little bit more, you know, of a, of a fist to your face from Zeus and a little bit more of that tank shell from Mr. 369 for the side of Top Esports. Still expecting a more competitive series than what we'll probably get Gen G FlyQuest, but feels like T T1 has really leveled up since that first matchup against Top Esports. So I'm hard pressed to see them bowing out in quarters at this current form. I can't go against T1 in this situation. You know me as much as as much as producer Reed would love it for a Top Esports victory here. I'm rolling through with T1. It's going the full distance. Silver scrapes for this one but it's going to be the T1 clutch factor coming through in the clutch for game five. Losing before semifinals is just, it's unknown territory to Faker at these world championships. So yeah, still expecting even more of a level up out of T1. Somehow, some way, we've got a pair of first seeds from the LCK and LPL matching up in quarters. We can blame BLG for dropping a two and two. Uh, for that one but man this could have legitimately been a finals matchup that you were thinking of heading into this event and maybe BLG hasn't quite been at the power level that we expected especially early on in this tournament but losing one of these teams before semis is a tragedy it's pretty crazy but I think at the same time this is exactly what both of these teams needed for their quarterfinals matchup. You can look at Hanwha Life and, again, the struggles that they had against FlyQuest, you know, uh, being pretty embarrassed by a new, new pick of all things, needing a statement to show that we are that LCK number one seed. We are that team that dethroned Gen G. And there's your reminder, taking down a squad like BLG, eliminating them in the quarterfinals would be that message to the rest of these teams at the event. And on the same side, BLG, a shot across the bow, taking out the LCK's number one seed in these quarterfinals, in these knockout rounds, would be that message to everybody else that, yeah, we had our struggles, but we're absolutely the killers that you think that we are and that you've seen us be throughout the, the entirety of this split. Yeah, and honestly, whoever wins this series, I might be putting as the favorite for the rest of the event because they're going to have such a difficult quarterfinals matchup. Semis might even be easier, but the confidence and level that either squad's going to have to be at to win this one will be absolutely terrifying. Obviously, I think the biggest mismatch is going to be Doran versus Bin, especially uh, if Bin is getting anything close to resembling the Jacks in this series. But... At the same time, I've got confidence in maybe no team more than Hanwha to almost ignore Bin if he gets out of control. They are the wombo combo masters of finding team fights out of nowhere and just ignoring that split push. And I think a big part of that for me for Hanwha Life is going to be about Peanut. What type of form he's in on the day, how he's communicating with the teammates. That's going to be a, a big one for me because he is absolutely capable of getting this communication, getting a combo up into that top side and really start preying on Bin and setting that up with Doran. If their synergy is in sync, that's something that I would be looking at if you're Hanwha Life to try and, you know, if you're trying to hyper focus in onto that matchup, or maybe you might say abandon ship top side, focus elsewhere type of situation to see from Hanwha Life. But I think Peanut's role in this series is going to be a big part of whether Hanwha Life is competitive enough against BLG. Especially because he might have to be taking out two junglers in this series. Whether or not we end up uh, seeing Wave return back to the lineup or uh, 
I'm expecting both of them to play because I'm expecting BLG to drop some games and maybe start sweating a little bit. But uh, man, the meta, different champion pools, but it's perfect for both Zekka and Knight at this time. You got Syndra and Jace coming back for Knight. And obviously, Zekka, we still got that Silas that's been popping up more and the Yone and the Akali. So both mid laners, this is a treat of a matchup. And all I want to see from both of them is not a situation where you start going, okay, this guy picked this. I want to pick this type of thing because it's like this. Uh-uh. Play to both of your strengths. Play to what you are comfortable, what you are playing well with. If it happens to be this type of one where, oh, it's a counter, you know, this type of, absolutely go for that type of one. But don't need to stray too far. Play to your strengths. Play to that comfort and see how far you can push it. That's the thing I want to see from both of these players, both of the styles knight and zeka when they are on their top optimal option that's that's when they're at their best and when they're playing at it so i think there's no need to deviate from that in the draft for any little special pick or something like that stick with the power ones for your for your power guys there's no way this isn't going to five games uh, they're they're too evenly matched these two powerhouses but i feel like blg has still looked a little bit shakier Heading towards this, uh, On in particular has been a mighty sus throughout, whereas Delight is probably the best support at the tournament so far. So I'm I'm hanging towards Hanwha Life. It, it's got a little bit of magic energy around them as potentially Peanut's last world's run. I think I think as well that we've seen the shakiness from BLG and it's just enough that I'm not ready to fully trust them into that full power level yet. And I think that one of the things that we're also forgetting to mention is your boy Viper. He's going to have a pretty nice little incentive to remind Elk and say, hey, you know, you've been thriving in the LPL. Maybe it's because one of the bigger fish has left the pond type of situation. I think Viper is going to give a nice healthy reminder of that to the BLG side. Especially you look at that last series. It was a bit of an 80 carry gap. No offense to Han Sama, but Elk was taking over these team fights time and time again. You ain't getting that same edge against Viper. No, no, Suri, especially if he's got his boy Peanut in the back pocket, making sure that he is roaming around and everything else that we have talked about. I, I think this one does go the distance as well. Bring up the silver scrapes again, but I'm going with Hanwha Life. The number one seed of the LCK cannot be extinguished just yet. The only Civil War matchup that we're getting in round one is LNG versus Weibo. It's a rematch of that third seed gauntlet qualifier. The question is, has Weibo leveled up since then? Because they were getting smacked 3-0 at the hands of LNG back then. And my answer is, I don't think they have leveled up. I think they got a generous uh, run to be able to get here. And I think LNG is maybe even better than they were in the gauntlet. Yes, and that is where we are worried about this one for the Weibo Gaming. I think a lot of people examining this one and going, probably outside of FlyQuest, the two weakest squads remaining in this top eight type of situation. And uh, if I don't know how you want to play this one from the LPL for the Civil War, whether you're happy or, if, or frustrated. Frustrated that you're losing one of your teams guaranteed in this situation, or whether you're happy looking at it going, well, probably two of the lower rank power level teams left at this event and we're guaranteed to put one of them on through and continue on in this situation and heck maybe everything goes lucky you get to match up against blg in the semifinals guaranteed lpl team into the finals type of situation but all that doesn't matter when you focus in on this matchup and what you have here with LNG and Weibo. We have seen this a bunch of times in the LPL, of course. Most recently, LNG getting the edge over Weibo. And for, for both of these teams, I don't think that you've seen necessarily their best step forward. That's what we're looking for in this next stage of the event to really showcase the power of why they've earned these positions at the event. And, you know, you can honestly go back and forth in some of these head-to-head -head matchups. Like, Light has been incredible for Weibo, and I think you're not worried about him holding his own in team fights against Gala. Scout, right now, you're giving the edge over Xiaohu, I think, in that matchup. But Tarzan's been great for Weibo, so you might give him the jungle edge. But maybe the surprise has been how good Zika has looked in their first couple of series for LNG and when he's playing at that level, then it's it's really hard for me to pick Weibo in this matchup. That's 
of one of the stories that happened throughout the L the LPL this year that I thought was under the radar for a lot of people was the development of Zikta and how he had been playing for this LNG team. And I think a lot of, you know, that is due to how abysmal the start of the year was and everything else that was going wrong with the team. Not necessarily a great environment to look and to showcase that you are developing, you are improving as a player in that top side. He, he has done that. And this type of Worlds event has been absolutely a notice to everybody that he has leveled up, that he is a more considerable option in that top side. For LNG, that is an edge that you give to him and how he is able to play. Now, can he be facilitated by the rest of the team? By the, Is he going to be able to survive You know, Tarzan making his appearances up in the top? That is the questions that LNG needs to be prepared for. And I think they will be. I, I think this might even be... A bigger stomp than the Gen G versus FlyQuest. I I know it's it sounds blasphemous to say, but I I got LNG taking care of business 3-0 here, no problem. It's one way or the other. It either is going to be that complete stomp. One of these teams just shows up and says, "Hey, we have the edge. We are better than this guy on the other day," or we are absolutely in for the backyard mud brawl of the LPL with LNG and Weibo. I think it's going to get a little bit messy. I don't think it's going to get messy enough fully for the for the Silver Scrapes, though. I think we're going four games, and I'm going LNG. I think it's definitely messy. Uh, if you're if you're having a Sloppy Joe Award for the weekend, I think it's definitely <laughs> going this way. Even though some of LNG's games have been clean, you know when it's an LPL v LPL oh, matchup, yeah. they're getting in the gutter. It's 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 like FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. Not quite like FlyQuest versus Team Liquid. I'm not going to insult the LPL like that. But yes, it is going to get messy. It is one of these situations when you do face a familiar foe that you tend to be a little bit more intimate the way that these fights go down and how close things lay out at the end of the line. It just feels like you're back at home, a little home cooking, going opposite another LPL squad as we head into the new rounds. Actually going to get a nice big venue for these quarterfinals. Blessed, finally, you know, three weeks into Worlds, we finally get it. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you gorgeous people. We'll be here to recap all the quarterfinal action, but we will catch you on that flippity flip.